Hi everyone, it's Paul and welcome to my video for day two of the 2023 Cheltenham Festival. Uh, day one is now in the history books and what a day, Constitution Hill. Dear God, I haven't seen anything like that since Histerbrack back in the day. And we did get the fairy tale ending with Honeysuckle. Uh, really ironic story on that one. Obviously, um, I tipped up Epitons who I was on. I was really unhappy with the ride on her, but to be honest, she wouldn't have won today anyway. But uh, I was cheering home uh, Honeysuckle like I had uh, a good amount of money on it, to be honest with you. So, um, no, lovely, uh, lovely ending to an amazing um, to an amazing story with Honeysuckle. Uh, we had a decent day today. Um, two firsts, three seconds and a third, I think it works out, off the number one pick. Um, obviously, Appetant was the only one who didn't hit the frame. Um, and fingers crossed we can get more of the same tomorrow. Um the interesting one is, uh, to start with, is the ground. I'm looking at the going stick here. The ground is definitely soft, but I think it's on the easy side of soft based on the form, uh, especially like the big breakaway got completely outpaced. And if it was ever really good ground, uh, really bad ground as in soft, I think he would have traveled better for a long way. So while it's soft, I think it is definitely on the faster side of soft. And I think with minimal rain, um, minimal rain around i think it will be good soft good to soft in places tomorrow but we start with the 130 which is the ballymore novices hurdle it's a grade one over two mile five and um as, as this is a really interesting market impera pass uh is what i said he is the hype horse from the mullins yard um what he did on his two runs this year has been very very pleasing stepped up markedly in trip here but all the vibes are this is a serious good horse. But there's been a lot of money as well for the Goodland, for the Barry Connell, Michael O'Sullivan combination who teamed up for Marine National to win the Supreme Novices. But for the win, I'm still happy and he's a much bigger price now. And it's almost an each way thief price, I think, this one. I'm happy to go with Hermes Allen for Paul Nichols and Harry Cobden. Um this horse has got all the form that you want in the book, basically. Three for three over hurdles this year. Uh, one, it was pretty much an egg and spoon race to kick the season off, but gone from strength to strength there. Won very impressively over course and distance from the front. But then last time out um, in the Challow, I think it was, at Newbury. Was it the Challow? I can't even remember what the main piece of form was there. Um, at Newbury, he absolutely sliced through softer ground um and one going away didn't even have that hard a race to be honest with you um yet it was the cello and i just think here i just think he doesn't necessarily have to lead i think he's the one with the proven form in the book i think he's got a lot of a lot more to come i think there is going to be the there's been a lot of money for him per a pass which i understand he is the hype horse and the good land he did hold on really well to win a group one the latest and in terms of a jump forward in form, that was the biggest jump forward in form out of anybody um, in the field from the, from the first run to the second run. Um, so it's a really intriguing race, but I just think Hermes Allen with the ground on the soft side of good. Do you know what? The probability is, is that there's going to be more fr uh, other lightly front runners in it. But I just, I don't know. This horse had a lot of speed over a shorter distance. He had a lot of speed over a shorter distance um, in, in, like, um, in his early career. And even in his point form, he's got stamina. So I think he's got the mix. Impere Pass is is the hype horse. And I think he's going to go very close. It's very rare there's such a hype around a Mullins horse and he doesn't uh, perform. Now, there has been a lot of money for Gaelic Warrior. The Well, it looks like the second string, even though he's got five arrows here, for... Um, for Willie Mullins, obviously came second on his UK debut uh, behind Brazil last year uh, at the festival. But that there's a piece of form he had last time, and it was a big handicap at Leopardstown off a huge weight. And he won it very, very well, kept finding. So I think the trip may very well uh, be in his, uh, definitely within his compass. Champ Keeley's done very little wrong for the Mullins yard, but with Danny Mullins riding, that looks like a very much like being a third string here. I do wonder, though, if they might try and send one of them on to maybe put Hermes Allen's jumping under uh, a bit of under a bit of pressure. 
Well, Hermes Allen's had a lot of experience. He's a course and distance winner. The going is fine. I don't th think he necessarily has to front run, but when he gets into a rhythm, he's very, very good. Clearly has a mixture of speed and stamina. And I'm just looking now, he's five to one. That should be an each way bet to nothing tomorrow. Outside of those five I just mentioned, the rest of them uh, have got a hell of a lot to find, if we're going to be honest. But one, two, three for the uh, the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. I'm going to go for Hermes Allen from Empere Pass. And I actually think Gaelic Warrior. Um, I think Gaelic Warrior is one to appreciate the step up and trip. On to the 210. And this is the Brown Advisory Novices Chase, which for me will always be the RSA, <laughs> basically. The three mile Novices Chase, grade one. And this renewal is... It's a really, really tricky renewal here, if I'm going to be honest. Um, the very short price favourite now, 11 to 10, is Jerry Colomb. Now, Jerry Colomb is unbeaten and uh, took grade one novices the last twice, um, which was at Sandown. And he jumped better the further the race went on. His jumping wasn't great early on, but he definitely warmed to the task. Um, he beats uh, amongst them the reopposing Thunder Rock here, who I fancied that day, but I don't think conclusively got home. That one looks a tricky ride at 20 to 1. Uh, he could outrun those odds, but Jerry Colombo, I think, has certainly got the beating of him. Um, three mile on soft looks like he's being ideal, and they're already talking him up as a gold cup horse. So he's very interesting. Sir Gerhardt is the weirdest one of the lot. Won his bumper, the champion bumper, two years ago. Then ran at the festival last year uh, and won. I forgot which race was. It might have been the Ballymore hurdle last year. Um, then got a third. Came back. He's only had one chase run and looked to be struggling, but came alive late on. Now, was always the plan to send him straight here. My slight concern is, my slight concern is having one chase run come in to run in something like the RSA is a pretty big ask. The real whacker has been a massive revelation this year. Patrick Neville, Sam Twist and Davis takes the ride. What I like about him is he's just been transformed by fences like every publication says. Uh, he won the grade one trial here in January and is a two-time course and distance winner. Soft ground doesn't hold any, um, any problems for him. He's had 10 weeks off. He does go well fresh. Um, and the real whacker was left in the Gold Cup till very late. So... That's an interesting horse, as is Gallia du Lito. Gallia du Lito looked amazing on debut over fences before everything went wrong at Christmas. Uh, proved it was just a blip by coming back next time. And the softer the ground, the better. My slight reservation is I do think it's going to be slightly faster ground tomorrow. And he has shown, while he's looked a natural chaser, when he throws a clanger and he can spit the dummy out. There's a lot of also runs in here. But one who I like, and he's actually the tip here, with many bookmakers paying top four here, is Time Hill for Philip Hobbs and Michael Nolan actually taking the ride. Now, Time Hill was a very, very good hurdler, as you know. Uh, he should have won the novice uh, two years ago, but for a bad ride, got caught in a pocket, um, came through and finished just outside the frame. Uh, then went uh, chasing, won on debut, wasn't brilliant at his fences, it's got to be said, before surprisingly being turned over the next time. Um, again, his jumping just seemed a little bit erratic, um, but still ran a solid race. But he then went to Kempton at Christmas, where I've got to be honest, I thought the Kempton track would have been far too tight for it. And that wasn't the case at all. Um what I would say is the big difference last time was they did put some, I think it was cheek pieces on, bit of headgear. Um, so I thought, OK, well, that could come in good. So it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is today. He's nine years old, so he is the oldest one in the lineup. But his, all of his runs at Cheltenham have been absolutely on point. I've actually looked now. He's 11 to 1 in places with like Bet365. That's a colossal price for top four, I think. Uh, he's had three starts, which is what I look for for an RSA horse, actually. Someone who's won three times. But what's interesting is, for me, the other transformation was, was softer ground. When he got beat at Newbury in November, he had only had a layoff of about three weeks, and he was easily beaten at odds on by McFabulous in a small field. But then, by the time he was then given five weeks off 
and went to Kempton. He then beat McFabulous, who beat him that day. He totally turned the form around on him and slammed him by 15 lengths. This was the day, obviously, where uh, Gallia de Lito um, pulled up and Jolino Bello fell. Uh, but what I liked about him was uh, was how much he found at the end of the race. And the Corto Star Novices chase, which he won that day, is often a good indicator for this race. Like the likes of Ahoy Senors ran decent in it when uh, having contested that. And I just think Time Hill, he uh, he was the classiest for them. He had the highest rating over hurdles. And uh, my pick would have been Sir Gerhardt if he had had a bit more experience. I've, I respect Jerry Colombo. I think he's going to hit the frame because he's done very, very little wrong. I just would hope he was would jump a little bit better for what I've seen. But I am going for a bit of value at 11 to 1. So the selection is Time Hill. One, two, three, then for the what we're going to call the RSA, Time Hill from Jerry Colomb. And I'm going to put in the real whacker, actually, because he's proven himself at the course before um, to make the frame. The 250 is another race I absolutely hate, even though I hate the Boodles. I really fancied Biker and we got chinned on the line. The 250 is the uh, the Coral Cup handicap hurdle. It's a class one over two mile five. And this is really competitive. It always is. For the selection, though, I am actually going for, uh, and I have flip-flopped on the selection here. It would have made the frame, but I think for a number one pick, I am flip-flopping. And the horse I'm going for is HMSC horse for Paul Nolan, Sean Keefe taking the ride. Uh, he's in off 11 stone six. What I like about HMSC horse is he does have a bit of course form. Um, he does have a bit of course form. He ran, obviously, at the festival last year. Uh, and finished fourth uh, behind Brazil. Be only beaten three lengths, and obviously ahead of him that day was Gaelic Warrior. So if Gaelic Warrior runs really well in the Ballymore, that could be an indication in itself. Uh, he came back to go chasing in September. Um, sorry, he ran some time on the flat, made his chase debut, or a hurdle run, I should say. Sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place here. A hurdle run in Navan up to two mile four, and that did bring about a hell of a lot of improvements. Beat a horse that day called Felis Deji, who, okay, he's not what he used to be. But uh, in his own right, he's a very, very good horse. But what I liked that day was he appreciated the soft ground and he was never stronger than at the end. He actually won going away. Uh, they've put him away since then. And I think that was to protect his handicap mark. He's run well at the course before, again, doing all of his best work late on. And I just think he's got all of his conditions here. He's got a good weight. I think he's got further in trip, which looks ideal. Um, and he's performed well at the course. So the selection is HMSC horse. In terms of the other one, I think Phil Dor is going to go and um, hit the frame for Gordon Elliott um, and uh, young Ben Harvey, who's a good young rider claiming five pound. Yes, he's top weight, but he is the classiest horse in the field. Uh, even if you look at his last six runs, he, yeah, he's only won two of them, but he's never been out the first five in it. He always hits the frame and he always runs a solid race. Um, he, he is a spring horse. He does seem to run a bit better in the spring for me. And that's why I wasn't surprised when he won last time out. Uh, and for all, he's got a big weight. Um, he's only five and I think there's more improvement to come. Um, one who I think will hit the frame and is completely overpriced at 20 to 1 is San Salvador for Joseph O'Brien and Richard Deegan. Uh, San Salvador has run three times this season, ignored his first run, blew up badly and clearly needed the run. Um, that was at Galway after what would have been, it was quite a quick two runs in quite quick succession. Came back in the November and came second, clearly needing the run behind Rian, who opposes here. But then next time at Punchestown, uh, showed a lot more form and beat Captain Combi, who also uh, runs here again by a length and a half. Interestingly enough, Joseph O'Brien said straight away, this was much improved. He's improving all the time and he is going to go to the Coral. So even as early as Christmas, he had highlighted it. He's got in off 11 stone, one with a three pound claim. So he's running in the 10 stones. I think there's more to come. I'm not sure why this horse is 18 to one, to be honest with you. Uh, I think he could seriously outrun those odds. Um, looking at the one that was originally looking at, it was Camperon, who run very well in this for a long way last year, but tired in soft ground. Now, he's drifted like a barge. He was 6-1 to favourite early in the week, and he's now out to 14s. 
I think he'll run his race, but I've last time he tired up the hill, and I'm just concerned that for Comprond, um, the uh, the uh, ground might still be a bit too soft for him. The ground should be absolutely fine for Langer Dan, uh, for Dan Skelton, Harry Skelton taking the ride. Um, he's run very well at the festival before, brought down early on last year. However, his form has not been in great, it's so good so far. And Benson, who used to be with uh, Nicky Henderson, now with Sandy Thompson, has never been in as good a form as he is now. Won the last twice, uh, but he's got £5 more on top of this. His last run was only 11 days ago, so it would need an unbelievable career best to suddenly go and step up again. Uh, it's always competitive, this one. Run for Oscar, run very well at the course uh, just over 10 weeks ago um, when it was it was actually on trials day. Uh, he won the Cesarowicz on the flat at the at the end of the flat season. Uh, came back for jumps just a few weeks later over three mile. Only got beaten five lengths. Uh, but then at Punchestown, it was it wasn't the trials day. It was at Punchestown uh, over Christmas. He came third, um, doing all of his best work late on. I think being by Oscar, he'll like the soft ground. Eleven tens a lot and. Yeah, he's shown decent form, but at the lightly weights, I still slightly prefer Phil Dore. And with Run for Oscar at 8-1, to one, Phil Dore at 14s, I do slightly prefer Phil Dore, to be honest with you, uh, to hit the frame. Um, but for the 1-2-3, working on all form lines, I'm going with uh, HMS Seahorse for the win uh, from Phil Dore. And it's a tricky one what to put in. I am actually going to put in Saint San Salvador at 18-1. to one. Which moves us on to the 3.30, which is the big race of day two. It is the Queen Mother Champion Chase, a grade one over two mile. And we could have a race for the ages here. Um, between the t And I'm going to put the top three in the market. Edward Stone, the reigning champion in Nergamine, and Editor Jajit. Interestingly enough, they came one, two, and three. Editor Jajit beat Edward Stone and Nergamine in the rearranged Clarence House uh, at Cheltenham. Uh, in Jan um, in January, end of January, February, I should say. Uh, and none of them have run since. Looking at the other ones quickly, Noob Negra has placed in a champion chase before, but his form is definitely better on better ground. Um, so he could run well, but that is a concern. Grianatine has kind of regressed this season, and I don't think Cheltenham is really his course. Captain Guinness is he's a reliable performer. But he just looks outclassed in this race. And the same for Fernambul Savola. Now, Editor Jajit uh, won at Kempton at Christmas and then won again at uh, the Clarence House. It looked like Edward Stone got him. Um, he was a bit gassy that day, Edward Stone. Took him on uh, but, um, in the final furlong after the last, but just got rerun out of it again. I think Edward Stone will strip a lot, lot fitter than Editor Jajit. And Editor Jajit was in the middle of being very, very... Um, in just in a very good run of form. Now, Edward Stone, what I love about this horse is, is his record at Cheltenham is obviously amazing. Beaten only a head behind Editor Jajit. Obviously, last year, he absolutely walked the Arkle uh, on good to soft ground, which was really good to see. The uh, the year before that, he ran um, in a handicap hurdle at Cheltenham, came fifth and only beaten three lengths. Um, even back in the Supreme Novice of 2020, came six, bit battered by Shishkin, but everyone gets battered by Shishkin back then. So he really, really does like the course. It was when he was odds on to beat Edward to Kempton in the Desert Orchid, uh, but un uncharacteristically unseated. But that performance in the Tingle Creek in particular, the nine length de demolition job uh, of Grianity, who reopposes here. Um, just in terms of time, the way he jumped and everything, that for me was just a fantastic run. And for me, that was just brilliant. Um, he was, he, as I said, he was gassy. Um, he was gassy last time out. I think this would have taken the edge off him. And Edward Stone, I think, will turn the form on editor Jajit. Now, the favourite is obviously a Nergamine, and understandably so. He's the reigning champion. It has got a bit of an asterisk next to it. He was the champion last year. Um largely due to Shishkin uh, pulling up very early on with his undi well his diagnosed bone condition, which set him back. Well, we didn't see him for basically nine months after that. Uh, he won the first two races this season pretty well, but he did come unstuck um, in the Clarence House for me. Um, and I don't know, I just was... He wasn't beaten that far, but 
He's, you know, he had won two races. He had stripped fitter. I think he was just beaten by better horses on the day. Now, Willie Mullins obviously knows how to get one ready for the festival. Um, and I think he will be better. But I do genuinely think Edward Stone, especially at Cheltenham, I just think he's got the slightly better form. There's not much between them. But I can see both Energamine and Edward Stone improving past Edward Sheet. One, two, three for the Queen Mother Champion Chase, Edward Stone from Energamine and Editor Dejit. Moving on now to the 410, and this is the Glen Farkless Cross Country Chase. It's basically four miles over the cross country course, class, um, class two, and I'm all about Delta work here. Um, as people know, I'm quite well connected to the Martin Keith Liard, and there was a lot of people won a lot of money on back on the lash in January on trials day, the way it was positioned to me was at the time, this is his Cheltenham. Uh, obviously that was a handicap and he battled really well and got the job done. Uh, the vibe coming from the course that day is Delta work was overweight. Um, he didn't look particularly fit and instantaneously people connected with back on the lash basically said, we won't rebeat him at, at the festival off level weight. One, it'll be level weight and two, he'll be a lot fitter. Delta work run, still run really, really respectable. Um, they kept him ticking over. He came six last time out over a trip that wasn't suitable. He obviously won the race last year, beating the magnificent Tiger Roll. Um, and everything just seems in place for Delta work here um, to retain his crown. Galvin is interested on his interest on his first start. Um, on his first start on the cross country course, obviously ran an absolute screamer to come forth in the Gold Cup last year. His form's been very hit and miss. It's got to be said this year. He has got a win, but generally slightly underperformed. Uh, Davy Russell taking the ride. Um, for Gordon Elliott as well, who also trains Delta work. Um, there's very little between them. And to be honest, if you want it right, the class horse of the race now, it is probably Galvin. A couple of years ago, it would have been Delta work. He was the talking horse for like the RSA, etc., going into Cheltenham. And he's a bit older now at 10 years old. Um, but I just think course form is important. And I think Delta work is going to put that course used to good knowledge uh, to good advantage. Franco Deport's in here for Willie Mullins. He's eight to one, uh, a load of third, fourth, fifth, fifth, four, five. It does seem a bit of a stretch for Franco Deport to suddenly go. Um, you know, let's try the cross country. He's a classy horse, but I just don't know if he'll take to the cross country. Obviously, I tipped him up a few times last year at two and a half. It's a significant step up in trip and a unique course. I'm just not absolutely convinced. One who I think could outrun the odds, and I do think, is um, Snow Leopardess. Snow Leopardess came sixth um, last time out on his first try around this course. Um, was a bit lit up by the course, uh, and but was still bang there, turning in, getting to the, um, the Laurel Hedges, coming up the hill for the last, and just blew up. Good second since then. I just think Snow Leopardess will be a little bit more clued up about this course this time. And at 25 to 1, I think she's overpriced. Daisha Arbor obviously came second, uh, separating back on the lash and Delta work. Um, so if he could go, go and pull that form back, which did surprise me because he's kept all of his best form for Ascot, then he would have a chance. But I think Snow Leopardess could improve past that one. Um, it's hard to make a case for the rest, but I'm back on the lash. You know, very consistent horse, loves the cross-country course. Uh, if the ground dries out, I think he would have a really good chance. Um, I think he could run a big race, but this isn't a handicap. And I think he'll run honourably without possibly hitting the frame. But for the one, two, three, for the cross-country chase, we're going for Delta work from Galvin. And I am actually going to put Snow Leopardess in there. Sorry, drop me phone. <laughs> Um, and so now we move on to, um, I'm just bringing up my form here. Now we move on to the, what time is this one? The 450, which is the grand annual. The grand annual um, is uh, a two mile handicap chase, which is always massively competitive. It has to be said, uh, but it is getting winning by more classier short, uh, swords. Uh, it's a class one listed um, and it's very, very hard, this, because the front two in the market 
are horses who are trained, but well, owned by J.P. McManus. Now, J.P. McManus does have a good record of runners in this race, and he's got Dino Blue here for Willie Mullins, and also Andy DeFresney, who ran well for a very long way um, in this race last year. Uh, both That one has a huge weight, but does like the course. Um, his form hasn't been inspiring, though, this year, and to carry top weight is a concern. Dino Blue as well. This horse has looked a lot better for fences this year. It's got to be said and has a lovely racing weight off 10 stone 13. Um, but he is pretty inexperienced for a race of this nature. And when he run over hurdles last year at 11 to 8, uh, was battered by Love en or she was battered by Love Envoy uh, in the Mers Novices race and didn't particularly look to like the course. So there is a bit of taken on trust there. The horse I do like, but there is a question mark about him um, at the course, but he's in the form of his life and at the right age is Quer Sublime for uh, Henry de Bombhead, Ben Harvey taking the ride. Now, Quer Sublime has run several times at Cheltenham, finished down the field in the Arkle, but to be honest with you, is he that level? I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you. Came 7th of 11 behind Edward Stone, um, and before that tried to champion hurdle, it was a, she was a decent hurdler, but not out of this world. But over Novice Chasers has been quite good. A couple of times beaten by Fernie Hollow. Sadly, that one's out injured. But, um, you know, uh, that's still a good piece of form. A close second to Blue Lord. Very solid form. Uh, fell uh, when beaten by Jeremy's Flame, but travelling well. Beaten at odds on last time. That's a slight concern. Uh, and did get out-battled. So I just wonder if this one's going to get played late. But I do think Cursor Bleem is going to hit the phrase. Hit the phrase. The frame. Um, what uh, Global Citizen won the race last year, but needs bottomless ground. And while I think it might be soft, I don't think it will be bottomless. While I wouldn't put people off. Look, if you're looking for something at a big price, which I know people kind of do in these races, I wouldn't put people off putting a few pound uh, on Epson de Who for Henry de Bromhead. And Rachel Blackmore, two runs this year. The last one, the handbrake certainly looked like it was on. Uh, distance is absolutely fine. Uh, 11 stone six is not a bad weight at all. And Henry de Bromer does have a good record in the race. I can see him running a creditable race with most bookmakers paying top five here. Uh, but for the win, I'm actually going for, he's actually now second favourite. And that is the final orders for Gavin Cromwell and Keith Donoghue. Now, this horse is improving hand over fist all season. Um, a five in a row at Leopardstown last month. I've got to be honest, I backed it at Leopardstown just purely because I thought, well, it looks competitive. I don't know who else to do. And this one might be able to run a place. And I've got to be honest, I backed it thinking it might run a place. It was actually, for me, the best performance that the horse has put in this season, beating Baron Coolier uh, by four lengths. But the time before that, went to Leopardstown at Christmas for another handicap, absolutely routed them, and has just continued to do that all season. And he's putting acres in between all of his um, rivals as well. What I liked is, though, even in early October, over two miles seven, uh, the step up and trip was no problem and won there. Um, as I said, literally since last year, he's only had three or four defeats, and even then were very small margin. He does seem to be in the absolute form of his life. Um, they've kept him ticking over. He, he, see, when he gets beat, it's usually after a break. Um, uh, and he, so they've kept him ticking over. He's had five weeks now. That should be enough. And I just think that he's got more to come against what could be the good horses are very, very high up in the weights. And there's some untried season campaigners. Sorry for scratching. I've been out in the cold and my nose is freezing. Um, but for the win, uh, I am going for final orders. One, two, three then for the grand annual uh, handicap chase, the 450. Final orders from Queer Sublime. Um, and I'm actually going to put in... I'm actually going to put in... Uh, Dino Blue. I'm going to, I know it's a strange one to put in. I'm actually going to put in Dino Blue um, because I don't know. He's another year older um, and he's got the best form. So he's he might sneak a place, but there's no, that's being said with very little confidence, to be honest with you. Which takes us on to the 5.30, which is the horror story race. That's the Weatherby's champion bumper. Grade one, two mile. 
And this is where the Willie Mullins bingo goes absolutely insane. I don't even know how many he's got in it this year, but I'm scrolling through now and it looks like he's got literally over half the field. Now, interestingly enough, when Fasal Vega won last year, that was his first first string to win the champion bumper since 2005, according to my research this evening. And that in itself is just a little bit crazy. So he's won it practically all the time since then, but it's very rarely uh, with his first string, um, which is just absolutely insane. However, I am going with his second string uh, for the win today, and it's purely on my form book, and I'm going for it's for me. He's only had one run 53 days ago, absolutely coasted around, but what got me is, is when he hit the front, he just kept finding, finding and pulled away. I wrote it in and said champion bumper winner in my form book straight away. I'm on a, um, I think on my, the WhatsApp followers I've got, I've said, I said to people at the time, I think we've seen the champion bumper winner here. So even though he's relatively low on experience, Paul Townend has picked him out of all of the horses. I just think he's got, I just think he's something special. I might be wrong, but we'll find out. There's an interesting form line between a dream to share and fact to file. The two, actually, they're the two nearly co-favorites now, five to one and nine to two. Uh, at the time, dream to share won at Leopardstown um, at the Dublin Racing Festival, beating fact to file, who did his best work late on there. Interestingly enough, J JP McManus owned fact to file and then went and bought a dream to share. I think based on that run, I think a fact to file, nothing really went right for it at that time. And I can see a fact to file changing, turning the form on a dream to share who's actually the favourite. Fun, fun, fun for Willie Mullins has been very good. One, two out of two. Um, but if you look at the racing post ratings it got to uh, on any of his runs, it's still nowhere near the level that it's for me ran to in only one run. Um, so that form line is good. Uh, again, it was another bumper at the Dublin Racing Festival, but how good, I don't know, but I think he could end up running the frame. Looking at bigger prices, Queen's Gamble was strongly fancied, uh, won, the tri won a trial, and Oliver Sherwood says this could be a champion bumper type, um, but the Brits don't have a brilliant record in the champion bumper, let's face facts, and there's only about four British horses in the entire field. Uh, one which is interesting is Lachlan, and someone commented on my video on this now, talking about two form lines on this one. Uh, that was has been, both form lines have been readily uh, franked since. Uh, Michael O'Sullivan, who got two winners today, uh, is riding for Willie Mullins, which is quite rare. But it's interesting. This one's been very weak in the market, 16s out to 33s today. And I, my only concern is the very rarely the market gets it wrong with the Willie Mullins horses, uh, especially in the champion bumper. Uh, one to mention, which could be interesting, is better days ahead. Good, um, Jody Codd is riding for Gordon Elliott. Looked very good at Fairy House in December. And they said at the time, we're roughing him off purely for this. This horse has only had three runs in his entire life. One, a point to point over three mile. So clearly stays before winning a down royal bumper first time out at odds on and took his form step, another step forward. I don't think the gap is a concern. More of a concern is, is what has he actually beat? And at this moment, I'm thinking not a great deal, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, there's nothing where I'm thinking, oh, well, that's a decent form line, really. But I think in the bumper this year, I do think it's between the front three in the market, I have to say. So from a one, two, three in the champion bumper, I am going for it's for me from fact to file and a dream to share. Good luck, everyone. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you tomorrow for day three. Take care. Bye-bye.